Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's September 6th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. As of September 6, 2024, Clean Energy Fuels Corps is down ever so slightly to $2.66 per share. Opal Fuels Incorporated is now sitting at $3.79 per share. Arkea Energy is up to $26 even per share. Renewable Energy Group is now sitting at $61.50 per share. And Total Energies is now trading at $66.24 per share. But first up in the news, Northwestern Utility Company Avista has put in an official request for proposal seeking to secure renewable natural gas resources for its customers over the long term. Avista services a territory that covers 30,000 square miles in eastern Washington, northern Idaho, and parts of southern and eastern Oregon with a population of 1.7 million. Jason Thaxon, Avista's chief strategy and clean energy officer, said, quote, Avista is seeking to obtain RNG so that we may build on our aspirational goals to be carbon neutral in our natural gas operations by 2045, and so that we may also meet the requirements of Washington's Climate Commitment Act and Oregon's carbon reduction goals. Additionally, legislative changes have laid the groundwork for utilities such as Avista to enter the RNG market as developed developers, long-term buyers, and long-term partners to help grow and mature the RNG market in North America, end quote. Proposals are due by Tuesday, October 29, 2024, with RNG deliveries to begin as early as January 1, 2025. And up next, GFL Environmental has agreed to limit pollution coming from a large landfill it operates in Sampson County, North Carolina. This following a lawsuit filed earlier this year against the company from the Southern Environmental Law Center on behalf of the Environmental Justice Community Action Network. The lawsuit was in regards to alleged violations of the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. In a proposed consent decree between the two parties, GFL has agreed to substantially decrease the amount of certain perfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS chemicals, that it is currently discharging via the landfill's leachate. It will also monitor methane emissions via drone. And up next, Dutch company OCI Global recently announced they plan to double their production capacity of green methanol in the U.S. to 400,000 tons per year ahead of 2025. According to the company, demand for green methanol from high emissions industries will grow by more than 6 million tons by 2028. The scale-up at OCI's facility in Beaumont, Texas, will include entering into new supply agreements for renewable natural gas, or RNG, exceeding 15,000 metric meter BTUs per day. Bashir Labata, CEO of OCI Methanol High Fuels, said, quote, Methanol is the transportation sector's most viable solution and the easiest way to transport and use renewable hydrogen today. We are seeing increasing pull from road fuel markets due to the delay of electric vehicle adoption and the charging station build-out, and while marine demand has been growing at a very fast pace, we have yet to see the impact of retrofits, which should end up being a larger segment than new builds. End quote. And up next is our second story about the high cost of toxic pollutants as the Department of Justice recently announced that clean harbors will be required to pay more than $5 million in fines and cleanup for contamination at a Superfund site north of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The site was contaminated by polychlorinated biphenols, or PCBs, before Clean Harbors acquired it in 2002. The site, known as the Devil's Swamp Lake, was originally opened by Rollins Environmental Services in 1969 and later became the subject of a class action lawsuit brought by residents affected by the PCB contamination. 
Jim Buckley, Senior Vice President of Investor Relations and Corporate Communications at Clean Harbors, said, quote, We are pleased to have settled with federal regulators on this longstanding issue. We never operated the Rollins disposal facility that was designated by the EPA as a source of contamination to Devil Swamp, which occurred decades prior to our ownership of the site. End quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com, that's diamondsci.com, or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. And next, renewable fuel producer Gassum recently announced they are now collaborating with Hapag Lloyd to supply their container vessels with bio-liquefied natural gas during a two-year tender period. Earlier this year, Hapag Lloyd, one of the world's leading container shipping companies, won the first tender by the Zero Emission Maritime Buyers Alliance, or Zimba, for ocean shipping based on waste-based bio-LNG that achieves at least a 90% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Jacob Gronkvist, VP Maritime at Gassum, said, quote, This agreement demonstrates that the green transition in the maritime transport sector is picking up speed. Gassum is proud to enable this transition by supplying shipping companies with bio-LNG in the northern European region. We need all hands on deck to drive the effort, and using bio-LNG to fuel maritime transports is an effective way to reduce emissions already today, rather than in the distant future. End quote. And speaking of renewable fuel for large-scale transportation markets, Fast Markets recently announced this past week the launch of their first sustainable aviation fuel prices for the North American market. From January 1, 2025, the European Union will impose its first SAF mandate while the U.S. is set to introduce new low-carbon tax credits to incentivize SAF production. These regulations combined will drive a substantial increase in sustainable aviation fuel output, with the U.S. aiming to produce 35 billion gallons per year by 2050, and the EU targeting a mandate of 70% SAF use on all EU originating flights. Tori Alden, principal analyst at Fast Market, said, quote, The launch of our sustainable aviation fuel price marks a significant step toward a greener and more sustainable future for the aviation industry. By providing transparent competitive pricing for sustainable aviation fuel, we are not only enhancing market stability and investor confidence, but also accelerating the global transition to more environmentally friendly fuel sources. End quote. And moving to wastewater for our last two stories, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has awarded University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee scientist Ryan Newton $2 million to study antimicrobial resistance in wastewater. Newton, associate professor in the School of Freshwater Sciences, will lead a team that will quantify antimicrobial resistance through wastewater treatment processes and compare resistance patterns over the past 10 years with resistance data from hospital clinics. The grant is part of a $9 million block of funding awarded by the EPA to four institutions for research to address knowledge gaps and better identify and manage antimicrobial resistance risk. And lastly, this past week, the City Council of Soldotna, Alaska unanimously approved an ordinance officially accepting their own $2 million grant from the EPA. Funding for the city's biosolids dewatering replacement project. The funding was actually secured in 2022 by Senator Lisa Murkowski. According to a press release from the senator's office, funding for the project was secured as congressionally directed spending in the Consolidated Appropriations Act fiscal year 2023. The City of Soldotna Five-Year Capital Improvement Plan describes the biosolids dewatering project as a $4.1 million project to reconstruct a building and replace equipment. The ordinance passed by the council both accepts the grant funding from the EPA and directly appropriates the funding toward that project. 
And that has been your September 6th, 2024 News Roundup, brought to you by Recyclist, a trademark of Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.